Hi, my name is Ali Shesova, and in this video we're going to talk about how we design the snubbing circuits in order to reduce the ringing that you get in some power circuits. So, if you've watched some of our previous videos, uh, you would have seen that we modeled a transformer. Um, for example, in flyback converters, you have got a transformer, and as we discussed in some previous videos, there's a certain amount of leakage inductance associated with the transformer. Let's call this L leakage. L gauge. Right? Now, typically on a flyback, the primary side is connected to a switch. And the switch has got a certain amount of parasitic capacitance sitting right there. The problem is that you're turning this switch on and off very, very, very fast. And of course, what will happen is that this leakage inductance will start ringing with that capacitor that you've got. So, although a textbook would say that the, the switch is going to turn on like so, in reality, it will turn off even like so. In reality, it would look the voltage across the switch would look something like this. And of course, that causes an enormous amount of headache for many different reasons. Ideally, what we would like to do is get rid of this ringing. And we do that with a snubbing circuit uh, or sometimes with a clamp circuit. We talk about that in a different video. And what you try to do is to make this damp this oscillation uh, so that you get something like, for example, this. Okay. Um, in order to do that, we use a snubbing circuit. And typically what we do, we place a capacitor there and a resistor there. Right? Now, if you place only the resistor in order to damp, obviously you have created a short because this is very, very low. This is a low value and the massive current will start flowing down here and it will blow things up. So you're adding the capacitor in order to create a uh, DC blocking and the energy will start going back and forth between the resistor and the capacitor and it will start dissipating. And therefore, instead of getting this red ring, you get this blue curve over here. Um, and whilst we're on the topic, this is the bit that is going to get hot. So if you have got a copper plane, it is a good idea to solder the resistor to the copper plane because this is the bit that is going to, um, uh, uh, to be dissipating the heat. Now, this is an iterative process. The equations that we use uh, is typically 1 over 2 pi the square root of LC. That is the resonant frequency of this ring. Um, and for a Q of 1, so that you get this blue curve there, we typically use R is the square root of L over C. The problem we have is that C is unknown. First of all, uh, th this is the C that is causing the ringing, so it's the parasitic capacitance of the MOSFET. Although it is def it's, uh, specified in the data sheet, you'll find that it is proportional to the square of the voltage. So unless you just magically happen to be using exactly the same voltage that the manufacturer tested it on, we've got a problem. We don't know what this value is, and it changes with the voltage. A better way of doing it is to measure the leakage of the inductance, uh, the leakage inductance of a transformer, which we've already done in a previous video. We can do that with a Bode 100. And then measure the ringing frequency. We can very easily measure this ringing frequency here, and that gives us FR. Whilst we have, well, then we have FR, and we have got L, we can calculate the C, which is the parasitic C of here, and then we can calculate the rest of the components. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. So, let us see what happens. <clears throat> On the green trace here is a ringing which with very, very little damping. This is a simulation. If I assume that Q is equal to 1, then I can simplify all the equations that I gave you into this. Right? Again, please don't worry. We've got a spreadsheet that you can download that this will design everything for you. But for a Q of 1, R has to be equal to 2 pi 
resonant frequency times the leakage inductance. This one we know because we measured with our body 100 in an earlier video. This one we can easily measure using an oscilloscope from there to there. 2 pi we know, and therefore we can calculate R. Right? The value of the capacitance is a little bit more tricky. Now, this is only an approximate approximation. Um, and what you see here, the green trace, the blue trace, and the red trace is, is different values of the snubbing capacitance. The larger the value of the snubbing capacitance, the better the damping and the more close you are to the ideal equations that we talked about. But unfortunately, the power loss is actually the snubbing capacitance times the square of the voltage that is across the, the FET times the switching frequency. And as you can see, if you use a too big a capacitor in order to get a very nicely snubbed uh, um, um, uh, voltage without any ringing, your power loss might be quite high. So what I tend to do is I tend to look at this part first and turn around and say, okay, you know what? For let's say a 1210 package, I try to limit the amount of power loss to between 50 to 100 milliwatts, even though you can buy a one watt package. The problem is that if you dissipate that sort of power, what will happen is you get a hot spot on your PCB and it started to blacken and after a while it will fail. So to be really conservative, let's say 50 to 100 watts, uh, so beg, your, beg your pardon, milliwatts, um, and therefore you know the switching frequency, you know the voltage across the snubber, uh, that is um, the, the voltage referred. We talked about that in a different video, or you can measure it. And then you say, I'm going to allow, I don't know, 50 milliwatts, and therefore you can calculate the snubbing capacitor. So then you end up with your switch, your capacitor, your resistor, ground plane, and you can see that we have calculated R, we have calculated C, we know that the power uh, loss is reasonable. So if you look at the green trace, that is now a real measurement on a flyback uh, power supply. And I have measured the um, ringing frequency, uh, which is around 25 megahertz. OK, so to calculate my R, I have to do 2 pi times 25 megahertz. In one of the earlier videos, if I remember correctly, our total leakage as seen on the primary was around 200 nanohenries, and therefore you have calculated your R. Yeah. Finally, you look at the voltage across the uh, switch, or you can calculate it by referring the secondary voltage to the primary side, and you know the switching frequency, you know the snubbing, uh, you know the uh, power loss that you want, around 50 milliwatts, you know the voltage, and you can calculate the snubbing capacitor size without dissipating too much heat. Okay. So I have done that. We do, do, we do this in a workshop. And then you, with a jumper, you can add in or take out the snubber. So this is without any snubbing. And this is with. So please compare the green trace, whereby there is very little snubbing. This is just dissipating naturally with the prosthetic resistances on the, on the circuit to this. I have measured the. Uh, rigging frequency, I've calculated everything, and this is the one after it has been snubbed. If you're going to do a snubber for the secondary side, i.e. the diode on the secondary side of the transformer, the equations actually stay exactly the same. The only thing is that you have to work out the voltage across the diode. Apart from that, everything else stays the same. Now, provided that you can make this capacitor big enough this will be beautifully damped. But as you can see, this is actually quite high now. Uh, there comes a point whereby the ringing peak spike is so high that a very large value of capacitor will be required. And at that point, you, your power will be too high and you get a hot spot. At that point, we use what we call an RCD clamp. And we're going to talk about that 
in a different video. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, there will be a, uh, um, a spreadsheet that you can use in order to do all these calculations. All you need to do is make your measurements and type them in. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.